These right here are DIY PlayStation icons. And all of this is how I made it. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos lately and a lot of people have these weird PlayStation icon statues sitting like on their desk or on the wall and their TV. And of course, since they're RGB, me being the RGB addict I am, I had to get them. That is until I went to Amazon and was very heartbroken because I found out they were out of stock. Then I almost gave up, but then I thought about it for a little longer and I realized that I could probably model this and print this using Fusion 360. It wouldn't be too hard. And so, I did. So all of the shapes are six by six inches with also a wall height of about 28 millimeters. And there's also a second wall inside of here so that I can actually glue the LED strips that we'll be putting on later on. So after I finished modeling everything in Fusion 360, obviously the next step is 3D printing everything. I bought this transparent filament. This transparent filament will be perfect because I can just put LED strips inside of here and then select that desired color with the LED strips versus filament. So at first I was printing with a four millimeter nozzle and the rectangle took about eight hours to print. The print turned out great. It looked really good, except it took eight hours. It took almost half a day. So for the next shapes, I wanted to try to speed up that process a tiny bit. So I ended up converting to a six millimeter nozzle and that cut the time down almost half. These prints only took two and a half to three hours. Now there was a catch to switch into that six millimeter nozzle because it did have a lot of string involved and I also had to print the X twice and the triangle twice because these two messed up pretty bad. I found out much later on that that six millimeter nozzle that I was printing with was actually not from my Prusa printer. It was actually from my old Ender 3 and that's what caused all of those issues. So now before I can put everything together, I had to clean up these strings and then we can move on. So the last part of this project was hooking everything back up together. Now, as I mentioned earlier, my shapes are six by six inches each. That's a 36 inch area. So if I multiply that by four different shapes, that gives me about 144 inches, which is about three and a half meters. So a five meter LED strip would, would solve it. I had about a 15 meter strip laying around and these are WSA 215s with about 60 LEDs per meter. And these strips are individually adjustable. So each one of these can change a different color. So that one right next to it can be red and this one could be blue. That's what makes these so great. And this is what's gonna allow the triangle to be green while the X is blue in the same circuit. For the brains of the project, we're gonna be using a Node MCU. And on this Note MCU, we're gonna flash Air Cookies WLED. WLED features a full mobile app as well as an API that we can control each individual LED through them. Other than that, we have all the wire we need. We have a 24 AWG wire and we made it white so that I can color it and paint it to the same color as my wall so that you can barely see the wires. And now we can solder everything to get this party started.
hold on now this stuff is nice to look at and everything but it doesn't have any functionality it's not really an odd project you know so literally in the middle of me filming this i had this cool idea where i'd be able to control the lights with my controller so i took my controller hooked it up to the pc and now and now we're playing with power I'm gonna link the STL files down below, but I implore you to kind of try it yourself because these are simple shapes. It'll be a great introduction to CAD modeling for you. We also have two new patrons joining Shane McNevin. So we have Shane McNevin, Maker Project Lab, and Mark Philpot. Thank you all for supporting the channel as always. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and continue to embrace the spark.